So when you deal with a compressor and are a pipeline with a compressor along the pipeline, you have a tremendous amount of emissions into the air. But you also have leaks and spills at the compressor station, hazardous uh, products that they use on site that leak and spill and contaminate the surface water and the groundwater. And then the air emissions consist of a whole host of volatile organics, benzene, known human cancer-causing agent, toluene, silene, as well as formaldehyde in large, large quantities. And these, even though they're into the air, they start getting deposited on the soil, on the vegetation, and contaminate the soil and then run off into the surface water and into the groundwater. So you hear a lot of people talk about the air emissions as if it just goes into the air. So what the citizens have to be aware of is that you're going to have a tremendous amount of impact. You're going to have the noise from the compressor station. You're going to have the emissions from the compressor stations. And then when they do blowdown events where they're emptying a part of the pipeline, all that goes into the air and gets deposited in the area around. And I'm seeing impacts out two, three to five miles around a compressor station. So, so if the drinking water supply is a surface water, the air emissions will precipitate out in the surface water source. If the drinking water supply is a groundwater source, then the leaks and spills at the compressor station and along the pipelines will flow into the groundwater and contaminate the drinking water source from the groundwater. It's happening at quite a few sites. Um, some of the old, older compressors that have been there 10 years have a huge quantity of leaks and they have um, groundwater contamination plume around the sites. But if the regulatory agency doesn't require them to have monitoring wells, which they don't, then the plume is there, it starts migrating out, and unless it hits someone's individual water well, then it's unknown and nothing is done. So this is another thing that there's one focus on the compressor, and it usually has a general permit for air emission, but not the focus on all the impacts that it can cause to an area. There's a lot of gas to liquid facilities being proposed, and people think, well, that doesn't sound so bad. But, but they're much worse than compressor stations. Their emissions are huge, and they use huge quantities of this natural gas and make all these other chemicals that then they put in pipelines to come down to the Gulf Coast to be used at the chemical plants in the Gulf, Gulf Coast. Now, the radon and the radium in Gulf Coast natural gas is not near as high. Marcellus is very high in naturally occurring radioactive material, radium-226, 228. And also, when you ship it up from the Gulf, it's a longer travel time. The houses and apartments in this area are much tighter than Louisiana, all of everything leaks. And once that radon gets in, it is released when they have stoves that are natural gas or dryers, and it's released into these apartments, and there's a danger of increased lung cancer as a result because the Marcellus is so hot and has such a short travel time. This will continue up into the Northeast It'll continue being released at the compressor stations, at the valving stations, at the venting stations. So that's another huge issue because the natural gas you were using didn't have as much radium and it had a longer travel time to deplete. So for a, a new technology development like this, it's being allowed to be developed, basically unregulated, and doing huge, huge damage to the environment. And releasing huge quantities of very toxic chemicals, the volatile organics, the semi-volatiles, the polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons, the radiation, the heavy metals, and contaminating soil, groundwater, surface water, vegetation, wildlife, bioaccumulating up all of the food chains. And it's being done in the name of energy independence with the regulatory agency having little to no oversight.